Welcome to another Tech Tuesday at FiTech. Today we're going to talk about the FiTech GhostSpark CDI ignition system and how to install it properly. On this setup, without using timing control by the EFI system, it's running the exactly the same way that a carburetor would run. I'm also connecting the TAC output from the CDI box to the transmission controller. Being that I'm not controlling ignition timing with the Easy Street EFI, so all I'm doing is using the distributor to send the signal to the Ghost Spark, and the Ghost Spark is sending an RPM TAC output to the Easy Street and to the Ghost Shift and to the tachometer. So with the Ghost Park mounted over here, it's not quite long enough for the two-wire output of the distributor to reach the Ghost Park connector. So we're going to use this extension harness to connect between the distributor and the Ghost Park. The inner fender is a great place to mount the CDI box. Make sure to mount it with the connector pointed down to avoid water ingress. And it's great being far away from the exhaust system heat. So this distributor happens to have a two-wire pickup a mechanical and a vacuum advance. So this distributor is also doing all the ignition timing control by itself and it's just sending a signal to the CDI box. The CDI box is sparking the coil. The coil of course sends the spark up back to the cap and the distributor does its thing all by itself. We're connecting just the TAC signal from the CDI box to the EFI system. That's a very clean RPM input. That ensures the RPM input should not have any RPM noise. The two-wire input from the distributor to the CDI extension harness should be connected like that. Make sure to have some twist in this wire to avoid having RFI input into the signal that goes to the CDI. Like a lot of customers, the battery on this application is in the trunk. Uh, We're running a very heavy-duty cable up to the starter solenoid and I am getting the power for the CDI box from here but on the EFI, I'm actually getting power directly from the battery. As a special note, when you're not running timing control, the points input is not being used. The CDI box just gets the timing signal from the distributor through the two wire input. When you're using a CDI system, make sure the coil is a high quality coil that's compatible with CDIs. And it's a good idea to inspect the inside of your cap to make sure that the carbon button is still in good condition. If not, you could either replace the cap or replace the button. And make sure on the rotor, the rotor tab on the center is able to contact this carbon button. Otherwise, the arcing that'll happen under the cap will erode that button fairly quickly. With the Ghost Park CDI system, make sure to use high quality ignition wires so that they don't arc out. Make sure none of them are burning. Make sure you use resistor style spark plugs and uh, non-solid core wires. When installing the Ghost Spark, a good idea is to first lay out the harness, and then from there you can figure out where you can mount the CDI box that reaches both the distributor and the CDI box and the ignition coil. That way you're not trying to extend wires to reach things. It's also a good idea to find and mark off the wires that you're gonna be using, such as the key switch. The key switch is very important to have the correct wire that has power during key on and during cranking so that the engine will actually start. This distributor having just a two wire input requires either an EFI system or a CDI box to actually make a spark. It doesn't have any ignition module in it so this is a perfect application for using the Ghost Spark CDI box. Again note that nothing else is connected to the two output wires for the CDI. And make sure these wires are run pretty separate from all other signal wires because that high voltage can induce RFI or other types of noise signals onto other electronic systems. On some installations you may experience run on when you turn the key off. This is due to a back feed voltage coming from the alternator. There's a diode in the kit that can be installed in the small wire of the alternator or into the voltage regulator to avoid this back feed. Make sure to read the instructions carefully. There's a list of what the wires function. Not all the wires will be used on every install. The main difference would be whether the two wire input's used or whether the, the white points input wire will be used. 
So there you have it. That's the basics of installing a FiTech Ghost Park CDI ignition system on both a timing control and a non-timing control EFI system. Just remember to follow the instructions carefully. It's going to prevent damage and it's going to make sure everything works properly the first time. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below or you can reach us through our website at www.fitechefi.com. And please join us again next week for another Tech Tuesday at FiTech.